Hello there, I'm Nat Wallen. I have been a realtor here in Charleston, South Carolina since 1995, and well, I've lived here all my life. Now, if you're considering moving to the area, you should subscribe and do click the bell to be notified of all of our new uploads. This channel will help you get to know what it's like to live here, and in many cases, you'll even get to know some of the good people that make Charleston so great. Now, in today's video, I'm gonna show you an amazing place that really very few people know about, and even less have the privilege of calling home. Seaweed Preserve is like no other neighborhood in Charleston. And while we're there, we'll talk about Charleston's growth patterns, snakes, birds, and a huge expanse of marsh and tidewaters. It's called Bulls Bay and the Cape Romaine Reserve. It's amazing. I'll also tell you my scary run-in with a giant alligator I saw when shooting photos. That was a super close call. Okay, if at any point you like this content, please do hit the like button to give it a thumbs up. In fact, if you do it right now, it'll tell YouTube that these videos are worthy of sharing with others and that would help, of course, the channel, so thank you. And of course, ask questions or do say hi in the comments and, well, let's get into the outskirts of Mount Pleasant. Here we go. Hello again, thank you so much for being here. Like I said before, I'm Nat Wallen. Charleston has been my home since day one. I was born on James Island, and then in fifth grade we moved to Mount Pleasant, and then we'd lived there through high school, and I went to college at the College of Charleston, and now I live in West Ashley. And just like most other cities 40 years ago, Mount Pleasant was a much different place back then. It consisted of just a handful of neighborhoods. In fact, Snee Farm, which was the first and only neighborhood with a clubhouse and a golf course, was way out in the country, and now it's literally the center of Mount Pleasant. Now there are several factors that have caused Mount Pleasant to expand. Many people come here for the school systems and really the, the easy access to both the Isle of Palms and Sullivan's Island, but it's also expanded because of the geography of the area. So there's just more space on this side of town compared to say James Island because well, Mount Pleasant, it's, it's not an island. So there's just physically more land in Mount Pleasant to continue kind of mushrooming out. And this is why Mount Pleasant feels newer than the other side of town. And many have negative feelings about this urban sprawl, and really the genie has been let out of the bottle here in Charleston. People love it here, and, and understandably so. And sometimes we just have to go with the flow and push out more to the perimeters as it grows. This is where Seaweed Preserve comes into all of this and really why I chose to feature this particular neighborhood. It's in the perimeter. And don't worry, there are plenty of areas and, and lots of videos coming. So do make sure again to subscribe and, and thank you. So Seaweed Preserve, why this neighborhood and why now? Well, I just sold a home to a really nice couple, Charlie and Suzanne from Seattle. Let me show it to you. It's a custom built elevated home on a very private three and a half acres. It has a really nice private driveway. It's set back in the trees. It's just a beautiful place. Now it's got good sun exposure. So the solar panels here come in very useful and you'd be surprised with a big house like this, they only pay about hundred dollars a month for power, which is great. Now it has big views, which we'll get into later. So Charlie and Suzanne, they found me on YouTube and they came to Charleston and they didn't know the area at all. So we took a day or two to really kind of get the lay of the land and we looked at areas close into town, we looked at downtown Charleston, we looked at a number of places and they decided that they wanted to be kind of in the country with some breathing room because you know that's what they kind of envisioned when they were back in Seattle, but they also wanted close proximity to Costco and shopping centers and things like that. And we got lucky by finding a place in Seaweed Preserve. And well, after a few visits after, of course, we ratified the contract and we had inspections and appraisals and just coming out here every day, I just had to come back out and make this video. So here we are. So Seaweed Preserve is a gated community on the outskirts of Mount Pleasant in a place called Awendaw. Now from downtown Charleston, it's about 12 miles north on Highway 17 as you're, as you're driving toward McClellanville, which is an, another amazing place. In fact, I'll make another video. There'll be a link up here at some point. You can watch it. But uh, anyway, I've got a catalog of things going. So check back for a video link up here. Every time I pass through this gate, I just feel myself taking a deep breath and I remember that it's, that it's not all about rushing around from place to place every day. It's about sometimes just letting the stress take a back seat and just taking some time to soak up the day. Now Seaweed Preserve, it has a total of 532 acres and all but about 100 of them are protected by a conservation easement. 
This means it can never be changed. So there will be no more growth or development here ever, other than the 30 deeded lots along the water's edge. And this unspoiled pocket of land along Bulls Bay, it feels like no other, as there are really no homes at all as you, as you wind your way into the neighborhood. Now there are eight miles of forest trails that you can just really get lost in. And as you're driving in the shade trees to the left and right, they give you a nice feeling of seclusion and just quiet almost immediately. And as you round each bend, you expect to see houses as you would in any other neighborhood, but instead you're just greeted with more nature and a nice winding road that really makes you feel like you're almost in another city or, or a country town. And once you do see the road opening up, again, no more houses, just a beautiful spring-fed lake that stretches from side to side here. It reminds me of entering the Biltmore Estate. And bordering Seaweed Preserve to the left is the Center for Birds of Prey. They hold exhibits every year downtown at Marion Square, and they hold demonstrations weekly at their facility here, which again is right next door to Seaweed Preserve. Let me play you a quick snippet from their YouTube channel and do make sure to catch my partner Neil Rice's full video on the Center for Birds of Prey. It's good. Okay, here we go. Probably the closest I could come to a nutshell description of the center is it's an organization that views the world we live in through birds. The center is a multifaceted organization. We have a medical facility where we treat injured birds. We have our public facility, which is a collection of birds of prey from all around the world that we utilize for education. The public are welcome to come and visit and explore those birds on guided tours and during flight demonstrations. And then we have our oil spill response facility, which is built specifically to deal with birds in the event of a significant oil spill here in the area. And then finally, our research component. Birds will tell us about what's happening out there in ways that no other indicator can. Okay, pretty interesting what they're doing next door, and it's certainly worth a visit. So if you're in Charleston, try to make it out to the Center for Birds of Prey. And again, it's located right on the other side of that tree line along the edge of the lake. Now, there is a link to their website in the description, so take a look. Now, remember Charlie and Suzanne, they were making their decision about this purchase. And, well, we happened upon a group of homeowners out enjoying dinner at the amenity center here. It consists of a fire pit along the lake, a small open-air clubhouse, a kayak launch on the lake, and these wooden racks to store kayaks and small boats. Now, these people, they were all just very nice and warm and welcoming, and, well, we learned quite a bit. Like every Thursday night, they do a potluck dinner out here on the lake, and, and they race remote-controlled sailboats out here every Friday, which sounds like fun. We also learned that the Department of Natural Resources, DNR, they've cataloged 293 different species of birds that live out here, and that the birds of prey, the neighbors, they actually release their rehabbed and rescued birds back into the wild here in the neighborhood. One nice lady even found an eaglet that fell out of a nest and she rescued it. So she ended up flying it on a private jet to a facility, I think in Ohio, if I remember correctly. That way they could take care of it. It's kind of a zoo of sorts up there. And anyway, the bird wasn't going to be able to fly. The eagle, it was wounded. Anyway, she donated it or she kind of took care of it and flew it up on a plane, which was kind of nice. And overall, it was a nice meeting with these people and really a great introduction for Charlie and Suzanne to the, really the types of people that live in the neighborhood. And, and do keep in mind, as we've seen this video, we haven't even really seen any houses yet. I mean, I, I did briefly show you the one that Charlie and Suzanne bought, but we haven't seen the whole neighborhood. And this is the point. The area is is so serene that you have to go looking for the people. And when you do find them, well, then you see that they're from all walks of life, uh, like the owner of the house that Charlie and Suzanne bought. He's an avid wildlife photographer and his house was just filled with photos. Let me show you here. These are photos of the birds that he shoots. This is his website. And many of them he shot right from his front porch or the community dock. And well, as an amateur photographer myself, that's, that's not very good, but trying to learn, well, it was a treat to see his work. Uh, like this alligator here. His photos, they, they look like paintings to me. Like, look at this bird in flight. This is a masterful shot with the speed of the background and the blur and the clarity of his head and eyes. I mean, this is just beautiful. Now, let me show you the path that leads to the community dock. So it's a shortcut from their backyard. So it just kind of winds through these trees here. And, and well, well, let me do this. Let me back up for a second. Let me show you the layout of the neighborhood so all of this will make more sense. I think it's important. 
So as you're driving in, you cross over the lake here like we saw before. And again, the expanse and the breeze and the entire field just cannot be captured in this footage. To drive in and, and see all of this, it's just, it's just magical. And all of the land in the front of the neighborhood is completely protected. And as you pass through and over the lake, well, the trees start to swallow you up again. So it's, it's like a tunnel of greenery that leads back to the shoreline, which is where Charlie and Suzanne purchased. This is where the 30 home sites are in the neighborhood, and they all have water views. But before you get there, on the right, you come up to these beautiful pastures. So if you're a horse person, this neighborhood is a perfect spot because of the trail riding and, and you won't have to you know, put your horse in a trailer and you could just go for miles on your horse in the woods. So it's a great spot. And, and so there's easy access, that's the point. And, and as of the date of this video, well, there are two horses in this pasture, as you can see, and they tell me that there's room for four more. And they're also in the process of building a four acre farm, I believe. And if you're not into horses, of course, it's nice to just drive by this every day. I mean, it's beautiful. Take a look. In fact, there are a few neighborhoods in Charleston, and this is one of them where I say, okay, I think we should sell our place and move. And we have very close friends in our neighborhood. We live along the Ashley River. We have a nice spot. But every time I come here, I want to just call my wife and say, let's call the builder. So the road here, it ends on Long Marsh, and it just tees off to the right and left. And almost straight ahead is the entrance to the community dock. And we saw a little bit of that already. And the house I sold Charlie and Suzanne, well, it's right next door. So it's one of the 30 lots, again, that stretch left to right here on Long Marsh Road. And let me show you the dock here a little bit more. It's a long dock. And if I had to guess, I would say it's maybe 700 feet long. And you can only build a thousand foot dock in Charleston, at least it used to be a thousand feet. And I think they, they shortened that to 750, which is a little bit of a walk. But as you can see, it's, it's a nice setting. So it's, it's a good way again, to let the stress take a back seat. And, and the fishing here is amazing. And well, these tide lands, they fill up and they empty out twice a day. So we have a six foot tide here in Charleston. So it comes and goes every six hours by six feet. So this overlooks Bulls Bay and the backside of Capers Island and Bulls Island, and off in the distance to the right is the Isle of Palms. So these are all uninhabited. Isle of Palms is an island that there are plenty of people there, but these other islands, they're uninhabited, and the easterly views here, they stretch out toward the ocean. In fact, you can hear the waves here in Seaweed Preserve, even though the coast is a few miles away. Now this is all part of the Cape Romaine Reserve, which stretches 65 miles north of here. So it's very remote and, and very unspoiled, as you can see. And the developers took great care to protect the beauty and just not allow strings of docks poking out here. This is just the one community dock in the entire neighborhood, and that will not change. And so as you can see, there's a nice bit of space between the homes. And if peace and quiet is important, then well, pushing out to the perimeters of Charleston really is a good thing. And, and Seaweed Preserve, it is a gem of a neighborhood. And there are some others that are in the same category, but they're a little bit different, like Ravens Run, for example, which is a little closer into town. Now, that's a pretty unique neighborhood because it has an airport and even some hangars. And in fact, when I started real estate, I had a listing in Ravens Run. It was a three acre lot here back in the corner that, that sat along the shore. It's kind of off to the left here. And lots of unspoiled green space and just big views of the marsh here in Ravens Run. Again, this is closer to the Isle of Palms connector, but it's kind of similar to Seaweed Preserve. And well, back in, I guess this was back in 2001, I was out in the backyard and I was, I was shooting photos for the listing. And I was just kind of taking pictures and I wanted to get way back so I could kind of show how big the yard was. And I remember seeing something out of the corner of my eye that kind of looked like a petrified fallen tree. So I kept snapping pictures and, and then I looked again and, and, and I literally kind of did a double take and I, I stopped in my tracks and I was literally shivering. About 15 feet away, there was this giant prehistoric looking alligator. And I remember looking at it with his eye, he was just watching me, his eye was about this big. And it wasn't a dark green alligator like we sometimes see around the lakes. This one was tan and brown and it definitely camouflaged itself. It just kind of blended in. And like I said, it looked like a tree at first. And this was super scary. I mean, I would have been lunch if I wasn't paying attention, which kind of gives me chills just thinking about it, but I'm still here. And please don't worry. This was just a random thing. We don't walk around in our yards here and typically worry about alligators. I was way in the fringe. They pretty much keep to the neighborhood ponds. In fact, if you want to meet a wildlife guy that deals with relocating alligators, let me show you this video. I'll just go to my website at natwallen.com. There we go. And then I'll scroll down on the home page to where it starts to become white and it says become a local expert. 
and then I'll click into any of these area pages. So these are all 19 areas of Charleston. And now on the right, I'll just click into this alligator icon. And this pops up a video with a guy that helped me get a wild animal that was chasing the contractors out of a crawl space. So this was a big home on the water and uh, there was something in the crawl space chasing out the inspectors and the contractors that were trying to do work. And this fellow's name is Mr. Critter and he's a pretty interesting guy. So he's kind of like the crocodile Dundee of Charleston. And he talks about how they have to duct tape magnets to an alligator's head because they have excellent navigation and well the magnet disrupts their mental compass and they'll they'll basically come back eventually and so he tapes a magnet to their heads to throw them off and he takes them deep into the woods and he lets them go like miles and miles from civilization so they can live in peace on their own so he doesn't kill them and speaking of alligators let me show you a live one here I saw this one while I was driving out and I just had to stop and try to get a good view of it. So, so here it is. They just kind of float there and you can really only see their eyes and snout from the land. In fact, typically they kind of look like a, a log floating in the water. You can see the tip of their nose and their eyeballs. Now this one looks to be about seven feet long or so. And again, you don't have to worry too much about these guys. I mean, they are wild animals, but but this isn't Florida where they're all over the place. Like, like we don't typically find them in our swimming pools and things like that. Just be careful around the edges of the neighborhood lakes. And if you're walking out in nature, shooting photos like I was, just look closely and, and listen very, very carefully. And, and definitely do not feed them. That's what Mr. Critter says causes all the problems. All right. That's it. That is the Seaweed Preserve video. Please do make sure to subscribe to the channel. And more importantly, please give this video a thumbs up if you like this type of content. Doing that and saying hi in the comments will help you tell YouTube that you like it and it will really help the channel. So, so thank you. And that's it. I'll show you just a little more of Seaweed Preserve on the way out and do reach out to me anytime using this Let's Talk button on my natwallen.com site. You'll hear from me or one of my colleagues if you need some help and thanks again for the likes and comments and, and for subscribing. Make sure to look for my deep dive tours of Charleston as well. If you don't know the area, there's some links in the description. It'll help you get to know the area really, really well. All right, thanks so much for staying until the end and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.